Hey guys, welcome back to the Monkey YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing really well. If you don't know me, which you probably don't, uh, you might be thinking, who's this girl in a very jazzy jacket? Uh, my name's Lucy and the cat has just jumped onto my lap. Good start. My name's Lucy and over on my own channel, I chat a lot about how I've managed to turn things around a little bit after spending the best part of 10 years battling body image problems. Last year I had a bit of a weird unexpected epiphany in realising that I just didn't really want to hate myself anymore. I woke up one day and I was tired of it. Like hating yourself is pretty exhausting and ever since that I've just been taking it day by day and attempting this whole body confidence thing and figuring it out along the way. But if you are coming from that place that I spent so long living in, dreading the mirror, obsessed with weight and shape, living in generally anything sack shaped and dark coloured to hide my body as much as possible, the internet's version of body confidence can be a little bit terrifying. It's amazing and it is inspiring and it is so beautiful, but it can also feel so intimidating and completely unimaginable when you've spent your whole life trying to hide yourself. It can feel like you'll never get there, so what's the point in trying? So these are my 10 super realistic starter tips for kicking things off on your whole body confidence journey and hopefully they're tips that might make things a little bit brighter, so I hope they help. Number one, decide to be on your own team. First things first, before you start freaking out over this whole thing, it just comes down to making a decision and very simply that decision it's just that you're gonna give yourself a break. Deciding to go a little bit easier on yourself means that you can also decide that like, yeah, this arm, this leg, this bum, this stomach, okay, maybe it isn't exactly the dream bod if we're gonna go off conventional beauty standards, but that's okay. It all starts with that very, very basic turning point of just vowing to go a little bit easier on yourself, being kinder to yourself, being realistic, and remembering that you need to be on your own team to get through this life and experience proper happiness. Number two, be kinder to yourself. Oh, that inner voice, you know the one. The one which has probably held you back from so much in life. When I start thinking about my body and wearing a bikini and things like that, that little voice turns into the world's most spiteful, horrible, harsh critic. But the thing is, you would never dream in a million billion years of even thinking, let alone listening to or saying or believing the things you think about yourself and your body towards anybody else in the whole world. So why do I think it's okay to put those opinions on myself? Newsflash, it's not okay. It sounds a bit cheesy, but try talking to yourself in the same way that you would talk to your best mate. Like think of her saying the things you think about your body about herself. You wouldn't listen to them. You would tell her that she is a total babe. Whatever your body looks like, you still deserve love and kindness and respect, especially from yourself. Three is start with body acceptance. So if you search body confidence hashtags on Insta, it'll probably be just full of super slim, athletic bodies that completely conform to mainstream beauty standards. And of course they are so beautiful, but aren't particularly helpful when you're trying to seek out more people who look like you and your squidgy bits. So instead I came across the phrase body acceptance online, which is something I just relate to so much more because confidence has never really been something that comes naturally to me, but acceptance is something that I can happily adjust to and get on board with. It sounds so much more gentle. The idea that this is okay, like this is what we're working with and it's not the end of the world and I can live a happy and wholesome and fun life with this body that allows me to do that. Number four is sort out your social media. The majority of prominent social media is giving us such a warped idea of what a typical body really is. In actuality, your body is the typical body, my body is the typical body. So remind yourself of that. Take the small step to detox your social media bubble from anyone who leaves you feeling inferior. Mix it up a bit, follow a big range of diverse bodies that look like yours, but that also look like the wider society that we actually live in in real life. Follow mid-sized folks, follow fat folks, Older folks follow disabled folks, non-binary folks. It probably sounds so insignificant and like, duh, but I cannot tell you how helpful this was for me. Changing up my social media was like a wake up call. Number five, wear what you want to wear. I always thought I had a kind of beige sense of style that could just generally be summed up with a, 
eh. But actually that wasn't my sense of style at all. That was a style which I felt obliged to have because I didn't think that I deserved to express myself through clothes because I didn't look like a model. Funnily enough, that ain't true. So make a real effort to think about the clothes that you genuinely want to wear, that you're excited to wear, that make you feel cool, like jazzy blazers. And if you don't know, mix it up, see what works. Whatever size you are, you're worthy of being creative and experimental. Just because you're curvy does not mean you have to stick to things that shops tell you are flattering and slimming. Hell no. Number six, challenge what you know. Once you decide you don't want to play this game anymore, like this game of feeling inferior and unworthy and that you need to change how you look all the time, it's time to start looking at the brainwashing that's convinced you of those things for so long. And once you start, it is impossible to stop noticing it all. And it turns out that pretty much every ideal that's been presented to us about what our body should look like and that we should all be striving to all the time, it was invented by diet companies trying to make hella money. We've always been told that you can't be anything other than slim to be happy and you can't love yourself unless you're thin. It's just not true. Ditch that stupid ass narrative because it's really, really dumb when you think about it and you deserve so much better than that. Number seven, do things to nourish yourself. I realized that recently my definition of self-care wasn't a super helpful one, like washing my hair, applying makeup, getting my nails done. All my self-care actions were superficial or for my exterior. So yes, they are self-care, but I wasn't taking any time to look after and care for what's actually going on inside. You'll develop so much more love and affection and care towards it if you're taking proper care of it. I mean things like cooking fresh, nutritious meals that you love and make you appreciate food, exercising for reasons other than weight loss, like exercising to feel strong and empowered. Do things that really nourish you from the inside rather than keeping all of your attention focused on the outside. Number eight, have the world's biggest wardrobe clear out. Use this as an actual cleansing experience and let go of any clothes that fit into the following categories. Clothes that you used to wear when you were thin, which you look at and instantly get filled with sadness. Clothes that you've bought recently and vowed to slim into. Clothes that you don't even really like to wear, but you wear them because they hide your body. It makes you feel completely inferior every time you open your wardrobe. And so even getting dressed every day just becomes a really horrible experience. See tip number five, wear what you truly want to wear reconnect to that feeling that a great outfit can give you and let your wardrobe really empower you instead. Number nine, be selective with where you shop. We all know the shops out there that just leave you crying in the changing room, so avoid them at all costs. And instead, look out for shops that have more inclusive sizing, more inclusive branding. Monkey is such a good example because I go into a store or on the site and I see myself in the models. I see bodies like mine and I see the clothes that are genuinely cut and designed with a variety of curves and shapes and sizes in mind. I never feel like I have to change anything about myself when I leave. So taking notice of stuff like that and sticking to stores that have you in mind genuinely will really help with how you perceive your body when you go shopping. My last tip for having a go at this whole body confidence malarkey is a bit of a weird one really, but God, sometimes you just need to remind yourself to stop taking clothes so seriously. We really have a tendency to forget that fashion is fun. It's creative, it's expressive, and your outfits shouldn't just be formed by what's gonna hide your little belly or what's gonna be slimming on your thighs. Like, God, how boring is that? Try and find the fun side of fashion again, and it'll really encourage you to mix up your style, try color, try pattern, try new shapes and remind yourself that your lovely body is worthy of style. I really hope this was helpful for you guys. Good luck on your body acceptance journey. You can find me over on my channel, which is Lucy Wood, and I will see you guys very soon. Take care. Mwah.